Hey, you know, Jesus promised freedom, and I think we all like the idea of freedom. And so in this video, I'm going to give you the key to living free in Jesus Christ. My name is John Whitaker, and this is the Five Minute Bible Study, and I'm on a personal mission to help thousands and thousands of people be more rooted and grounded in the Bible because I believe the Bible is necessary for a flourishing life. If you want to join me on that quest, then go ahead and click subscribe right now. If you haven't before, maybe even click the bell icon so you'll get notifications every time I upload a new video. And you know, there was a time in my own spiritual life where I used to just beat myself up over and over again. Man, I'd be living good for Jesus. I would do something that I knew was contrary to his standard. And the result was I would just beat myself up in prayer. I'd beat myself up, uh, you know, just in my own self-talk. And maybe you can relate to that. Maybe some of you have felt that way before. And this passage is one of the passages that set me free from beating myself up. Listen to what the Apostle Paul says in Romans chapter 8, verse 1. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Notice that. No condemnation. Clear back in Romans chapter 5, the Apostle Paul said that sin unleashed death and condemnation into the world. But if you move into Jesus, there is no condemnation for you. Well, why not? Why not? Well, look what he says in verse 2. He says, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. Did you notice what he said? He said, the law of the spirit of life has set you free. Not could have, not might have. If you work hard enough, it will have. It says it already has accomplished fact. And why does he call it the law of the spirit of life and the law of sin and death? Well, the reason he does that is because remember, chapter 7, if you've read it or if you watched the previous video, chapter 7 is talking about how the law became an unintended accomplice to sin and death and condemnation because it couldn't change the weakness of our fallen human flesh. And so he's playing off of that and saying, but in Christ, there's this new law, this law of the spirit that brings life and it sets you free from the law that was tied up with sin and death. And then he goes on in verses three and four and he says this, he tells really how that happened. He says, for what the law couldn't do, the Old Testament law, what it was incapable of it doing because it was weak through our flesh, God did. The law couldn't do it, but God did it. How did God do it? Well, he did it by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and as an offering for sin. When Jesus went to the cross, it was an offering for sin. And by doing that, this text says that God condemned sin in the flesh. Instead of condemning you, instead of condemning me, God condemned sin. He pronounced the, the judgment on sin so that he could let us go free. And here's the result of that in verse 4, so that the requirement of the Old Testament law, meaning the holiness of the Old Testament law, the holiness that God always wanted for his people, the holiness, the requirement of the Old Testament law might be, should be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the Spirit. Man, there's so much more I'd love to say about what is the flesh and what is the Spirit. We don't have time in this short Bible study, but I've got a whole other course that's all about this. It's called The Basics of Spiritual Growth. It's available on my website, and I'll link it down in the notes below. Um, and it just deals all of this grace, no condemnation, flesh, spirit, how do you walk by the Spirit, and a boatload of details. So you might want to check that out. Now, let me just point out one thing to you here. He says that um, the requirement of loss fulfilled in those who walk according to the spirit, not according to the flesh. That's the key to living free in Christ. You walk by the spirit. And again, I, I was a new believer in Jesus and I was going to classes and people would talk about walking by the spirit and they would always use this analogy of like plugging into the power of the spirit. Like, you know, I'm, an, I'm a plug and I need the outlet and the spirit is the power. And, and that all sounded well and good, but the reality was I was like, well, fine, I don't feel very much like a plug, and where in the world is the outlet? And it just didn't help me that much because I didn't know how to plug into the power of the Spirit. And again, there's a lot I would like to say about that. You can check out that Basics of Spiritual Growth course. But the Apostle Paul, in verse 5, he hits the key of how to walk by the Spirit. Notice what he says in Romans 8, verse 5. He says this, For those who are according to the flesh, those whose nature and of the flesh, those people who are not in Christ, in other words, they set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who are according to the Spirit, those who are in Christ and of the Spirit, well, they set their minds where? 
on the things of the Spirit. That's the key to walking by the Spirit because fundamentally to walk by the Spirit is to live in deep attachment to God by his spirit, to be attached to him. You could almost describe it more as walking with the spirit in partnership with the spirit. It's this attachment. And one of the fundamental ways we do that is by what we set our mind on. He says, those who are of the spirit set their minds on the things of the spirit. In other words, this has to do with what we focus our mind on and what we fill our mind with. What are we focusing our mind on as we look towards life and as we we focus on life and what are we filling our mind with? Are we filling it with God's things, the Spirit's things? Um, That's the key to walking by the Spirit is what we focus our mind on and what we fill our mind with. And if we'll fill it with God's things, then we'll live attached to God by his spirit. And what's the benefit? What's the result? Well, Paul says this in Romans 8, 6. He says, for the mind set on the flesh is death. If you just live according to the fallen culture around you, if you just live that way and you fill your mind with that stuff and you're focused on that kind of stuff, it's going to lead to death. But the mind set on the spirit is life and peace. That's the benefit. Life and peace. When we walk with God by his spirit, then we're full of life and peace. And God wants to give that to you in Christ. And so Romans 8, 1 through 6 says, there's no condemnation for for those who are in Jesus because they're of the spirit. Their mind is full of the spirit's things. They, They set their mind on that. Their life is focused on that. And the result for them is life and peace. I'll link up the other two videos in this series, Romans 7 and Romans 6, the last two videos, so you can check those out if you haven't seen those as well. And uh, I've got other Bible teaching resources, that course I mentioned, the podcast. I'd love to connect with you however I can. Once again, my name is John Whitaker, and thanks for joining me on the 5-Minute Bible Study.